If you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me where we can look over your data or discuss anything sleep, I've left a link in the description. What's going on everyone? So this video is gonna be super short and sweet. I wanna cover a concept which I think is super important and that's the idea of combining data. I wanna cover why pulse oximeters are super helpful. The thing to understand about sleep medicine and therapy is that we're always trying to measure what's going on, but we don't actually get, in most cases, direct measurements. Everything is a proxy to some extent, right? We can look at Oscar data and we can look at the flow rate and we can make assumptions and arrive at reasonable speculative conclusions about what is going on. But to say with certainty requires either, you know, more data or a direct measurement. For example, this is why the machine flags things as clear airways, because the data which is being collected by the machine can't actually determine if you're having a central apnea or not. All it can determine is that there's no respiratory effort and that the airway is open. This is also why we have different tiers to sleep studies, right? You can do the at-home ones, you can add a belt, you can add a pat, there's all sorts of things which can be added. We call these channels. There's level three, level two, level one, lanky lefty and true sleep diagnostics. Those guys send out level two sleep studies which have EEG leads that you can put on your head so you get EEG. And then there's level one with PEZ would be like the gold standard most channels type sleep study which can be done. And so this brings us to the question of well, how many channels can we measure at home? What else can we do at home to increase the statistical power of our assumptions of what's going on. And one such thing is a pulse oximeter. Why? Not actually for the O2 data. The O2 data is like a somewhat helpful, but the pulse rate and the movement data is way more helpful. You know, there's, there's this test in the finance and derivatives worlds of how do you determine if something is a security or not? And it's called the Howey test. And basically the test is if it looks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, if it talks like a duck, then it's probably a duck, right? And we can apply a parallel concept here with sleep disorder breathing. We have our Oscar data. We could say, well, it looks like a duck, right? But does it, does it walk like a duck? And you could say, well, that's the pulse oximeter. Does it talk like a duck? That could be your level one sleep study, right? So the, the idea is we want to uh, basically evaluate additional characteristics and see if they're all aligned and converge to the same explanation. I always tell this when I work with patients one-on-one, -on -one. I say, look, like, this is probably what's going on, but let's be careful and, you know, let's be careful and acknowledge the fact that this could not be what's going on because we just don't have enough data. It's suggestive, what we see is suggestive, but, you know, let's not inject our bias here and fall on one side over the other because we feel like falling on that side. One of my clients, which I work with one-on-one, -on -one, was nice enough to uh, share his data, which I thought was a perfect read uh, for this video. So shout out to him. You know who you are. Uh, let's, jump into the, let's jump into Oscar, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, here is the example number one. We have clear indications of flow limitation, huge recovery breath, sleep-wake junk type breathing, and pulse spike movement, and no considerable leak. Same thing here, around 5.45 a.m. You can see much of the same. We have flow limitation. Then we have a signature of basically sleep-wake junk with coinciding pulse rate spike and movement. Probably woke up here. Oscar didn't count this as anything though. Here's another one. You can see it's very similar. Once again, we have flow limitation slash not very good breathing. And then we have sleep-wake junk type breathing. And slightly thereafter, we have the pulse spike and some movement. And there's flow limitation in the flow limit graph. Now, you might say, well, why is this over here? Well, sometimes it doesn't always sync perfectly, but obviously, obviously. I don't think anyone's going to contest that this movement and this pulse spike is coupled to this signature of breathing. I mean, perfect example, right? You have basically three bouts of bad breathing and we have three peaks in pulse rate and three, let's say, clusters of movement. 
obviously being woken up. Again, let's not say with 100% certainty, let's be reasonable and fair in our thinking, but if it looks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, etc. Now, the, the higher these pulse spikes are, the, the, the stronger we can be with our assumptions. The smaller ones actually have a little bit more statistical error to them. And you guys might be asking, like, what does the literature say? Basically, the literature demonstrates that there's a very strong correlate, but it's not perfect. In other words, there can be false positives. There can be pulse spikes that are not actually coinciding with uh, sleep disorder breathing and some uh, physiological response to sleep disorder breathing. For example, you can have pulse spikes from nightmares. Everyone knows this, right? You don't have to have sleep disorder breathing. Your heart rate can get jacked up from a nightmare. So takeaway, we can use pulse oximetry to get a better understanding of whether or not there is an event and very likely an arousal, a physiological arousal, but we can't say for sure. But I can tell you one thing, it's not normal for your, your, your pulse rate to spike up 40 points 200 times during the night. And if you don't believe that, I mean, you can dive into the literature, that's probably the hard way, or just give your pulse oximeter to someone who you know for sure has good breathing and good sleep and doesn't have any sleep disorder breathing, but be careful, of course, because probably 25% or 30% of people have this to some extent. I did a video on this where just an AHI over five is like a billion people. So imagine if you included everyone, you included everyone with upper airway resistance syndrome, what would those numbers be like? It's a lot of people. Just to really drive this point home, here's a different, completely different night. So full limitation, full limitation, full limitation, huge recovery breath, sleep wake junk, and slightly thereafter, we have a tiny bit of movement, but we have a huge pulse spike up into the 90s. Here's another one. You can see we have very clear preceding flow limitation slash bad breathing tons of sleep wake junk you can call some of that recovery breaths with massive pulse spikes up to the 90s once again now you know what you can do as well is if you are still having the hypopneas and and, and apneas go look at what the pulse profile and movement profile looks like for those and then just compare that to events which are not flagged hello right but do you know what's even more fascinating than pulse oximetry data this. You guys have some explaining to do. Look at this. Not subscribed. 82%? I die a little inside to even have to say this. But if you guys <laughs> if you guys sub and do all the note, you know, and click the bell notification stuff, it tells me you guys actually like this stuff. If you guys subscribe, you know, it helps get this material to other people who are also suffering. So you, you can literally play a role in helping others by simply encouraging this channel, which I ask of you if you can, which is a small effort. Just, just subscribe, hit the bell notification, like the videos, comment. And by doing that, other people will be exposed to this as well. And like, who knows what influence that might have uh, for you know the final equation of humanity. Everything, either in life, everything matters or nothing matters. If everything matters, you're hitting the subscribe button and pushing this out to other people matters. Anyways, judge not lest thou be judged. I love you guys unconditionally. You don't have to subscribe. I'll still love you and I'll still push out these videos, but it would be nice is all I'm saying, you know? Mm -hmm.